All right. Hope everyone has a copy of the, some of the scriptures that I'll be, I'll be referencing this morning. I like the subject. The theme of God himself is love. And we're going to talk about that this morning. And you pray for me that the Lord will not only hear, but always when I bring the message that the Lord will use me as an instrument in his hand to proclaim his word. But love is the theme of the Bible. God conveys his love to us. He wants us to accept that love and to recognize it. But the Apostle Paul wrote, and this is called the love chapter of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13. Paul wrote this to the church at Corinth, and he said, verse 1, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity or love, I am become as sounding brass, or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity or love suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Verse 5, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, he's talking about any new prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And now, currently, after everything else, abideth faith, hope, charity. These three spiritual gifts. But the greatest of these is charity or love. Dominant over everything else. And then we'll go ahead and read these other two verses and we may reference them again in a moment. But John 15 verse 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And our Lord did that not only for his friends but for his enemies, didn't he? And then 1 John 4 verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Folks, there's no greater characteristic than that of love. The greatest subject in all the Bible. The greatest subject in all the heavens and the earth is love. An inexhaustible subject. But in our text we read in where Paul wrote the church at Corinth, he spoke concerning spiritual gifts. 
And he said whether there be any knowledge, he meant new knowledge, after that the uh, word was completed. He said when that which is complete or perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And that in part was when they were given the gift of being able to speak into languages without having studied them. It was a gift of speaking. There were 17 different languages spoke there on the day of Pentecost. And every man said, how hear we every man in our own language? It was not some kind of jibber jabber. But it was a language that they understood in their own language. But any new knowledge, now let me tell you this. When the Lord finished these 66 books that make up this Bible, that was his written word unto us. And he proclaimed, let no man add unto the word to this book. Neither shall any man take away from this book. And folks, that excludes the Book of Mormons. It's not a new revelation because the Lord gave us the revelation he intended for us to have. Folks, if we, if we understand all that he gave us, that's enough. Amen. If we study what he gave us, that's enough. Right? right? But the miraculous way of receiving new revelation from God ceased. That's what he said it would do. It would come to a halt. Also the gift of being able to speak in another language without studying it would pass. So we go back to love, the enduring thing. It is the theme of the Word of God. When you put all this book together from Genesis to Revelations, folks, well, that's a great expanse. The Word of God covers everything about life. His completed revelation to us, written. But when you put all this together, it's not hellfire and brimstone that sticks out. And folks, there's a place for that. The Lord told us to warn the wicked of their way. And if a person's headed on the road that leads to eternal destruction, we're to tell them, we're to warn them, aren't we? I'd a whole lot rather talk about the love. But on the other hand, if we uh, accomplish what God called us to do, we are going to tell people about their sin, or we're not. Now, love is expressed in many ways. Saw a bumper sticker some time ago now, and y'all probably saw it too because it, it seemed to be a popular one. It said, God loves you, and I'm trying. <laughs> Literally, God loves the unlovable, doesn't he? It took a long time for me to soak in my head. I thought it, well, if, if partially the, the way you're raised, I grew up around the Pentecostal group that thought once you got saved, you lived perfect from then on. Not so, my friend. They still teach it. But I thought if I did anything after I knew better, God was going to get me. Or that he wouldn't love me. But God doesn't love me because of my uh, good or bad, does he? He loves you because of who he is. 
He is your supreme maker and savior. So we talk about love, and I could uh, speak about this a long time. Paul said to the church at Corinth here plainly that love is kind. Think about that a moment. Love is kind. And I believe love is a kindness and love go together, don't they? And folk in life, we say a lot about life, about our everyday conversation or our face, or expressions or whatever it may be. But some people love with a smile. When I look and see people smiling, they always make me feel better rather than an old frown on their face. Is that right? And folk, we can show people we love by our facial expressions. And I ask you this, how much does a smile cost? Not a thing. And they tell me that your facial muscles <laughs> work better when you are smiling. But the smile needs to come from inside, folks. It doesn't need to be a hypocritical smile, does it? A sincere thank you means a lot, doesn't it? I read a, a little article a few days ago. this certain group of, I believe they said oriental people, uh, when they buried uh, their loved ones, they would go out to the cemetery ever so often and take a meal and place it at the stone or the marker. And one day some other people were observing this and they questioned one of the Orientals about uh, what, what are y'all, what were the traditions that uh, uh, y'all bring the meal and, and send it out here in the cemetery? Yeah. Well, this person asked the Oriental, said, how often do they, the deceased take the meal? And the Oriental answered, about as often as your loved one smells the flowers that you bring out here. <laughs> Didn't happen, does it? But I thought about that when the gift of flowers and when people send flowers to funerals and everything else for that matter to, uh, to say thank you or to express their love, don't they? There's a lot of ways that we show our love. By our actions, folks, we love. I had a distant cousin. I meant distant down the bloodline. He wasn't that close kin to me, but he was my age. Sad to say, he used to beat his wife unmercifully. And I saw her one day, the last time I saw her alive, her eyes had been black and beat up. And he said all the time he loved her when he'd beaten on her. Oh, that'd be a weird kind of love. And I said to her, why do you allow this? Why do you tolerate it? And she said, well, he said he loves me. About two weeks later, after talking to her, she disappeared. They saw him drive down the country road with her. 
and come back without her. He killed her, buried her. Folk, you don't love somebody to treat somebody like that, do you? That's a total opposite of love. By our actions, we love. When somebody tells me they love God, I want to know about their church life. Do they really love God? I've heard people say, oh, I can serve the Lord just as good outside of church as I can inside one. Not so. Not according to the scripture. But if a person loves the Lord, they're going to be eager and hungry to know about the Lord. And that's why you'll see them in church studying his word together. And then last Sunday I mentioned the fact, I used a scripture, by the Lord's long suffering. Oh, God loves us even when we're wrong. And that's the way we should love one another. <coughs> Again, love encompasses all things. But how did God say he loved us. Back in January 2002, I read a story about a, a man who was on the heart transplant waiting list. And I've known other people. I lost a cousin here a couple of years ago that was on there a long time and it, it never did happen. Uh, uh, an acceptable heart never became available and he died. But this man was on the waiting list. And if you tell me, is sometimes the waiting list is long and you got to know somebody almost to get a, in line. But in this case, this man was earnestly waiting on a new lease on life. And he got the word, we found a match for you. Unfortunately, that match is your son who's been in an accident and is dying. Now think a minute, just hold, hold that thought there a moment. Here a man he is on a heart transplant waiting list and his son is in an accident and life is fleeing from him. And now he's a match for his dad's heart. Doesn't that tear your heart out itself? Now I said that because this young man didn't voluntarily get in an accident. God used that chain of events to give his dad a new heart. Now how does that come in with love? It illustrates the love that Jesus had for us. 33 and a half years he walked on this earth. And fulfilled his ministry and his mission in life. It was no accident, like the young man I mentioned that was killed and his dad received his heart. When the Son of God hung on the cross, it was no accident, it was pre planned. The scripture says that. 
he stood as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The father knew that there would come a time that he'd have to give up his son for likes like you and me, <laughs> a bunch of sinners. And while he hung on the cross, they said to him, come down if you be who you say you are. He could have called the legion of angels, the scripture says, and delivered him from that awful planned death. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Folk, he did that because he loved us. Because a debt must be paid. The wages of sin is death. We all agree to that. The scripture says that. But he took on himself the punishment for all of us. He suffered the pains that belonged to us because he loved us. Today, he lives for us. He's seated by the right hand of the Father, waiting for the time the Father says, Son, it's time to go get mine. And that time will be here before we know it. He's making intercession for us. Folk, there's no greater representative than our Lord Jesus Christ who's representing you to the maker of all things. Who invented all things. And folk, he's going to return one of these days to receive us unto himself. And we get to live with him forever. That's an old song that I used to try to like to sing. Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who are we that the person that made us in his own image paid the debt you and I couldn't pay? Folk, if that's not love, there's no such thing as love. Love is acts, not words. Now, it's fine. I, I, man, I love to hear people say they love My brother called me and said, I love you. And that means the world to me. And I heard Brother Bobby's brother, in uh, his conversation today, he's, Earl said, I love you, Bobby. And folk, there's nothing wrong with conveying that thought that you actually love someone. But you can show me a whole lot better than you can tell me. Right? My wife hardly ever tells me she loves me. She accepts the fact that I know it. But she does everything else on earth to show me that she loves me. And folk, that's where it is for the Lord. He shows us daily that he loves us. And folk, that's the theme. It's this great book. If anything God wants us to know, he loves us. Someone here this morning, if you never accepted the love that God had for you, 
I beg you to do that today. Uh, Brother Robbie, gonna, Linda's going to come. We're going to have an invitation song. If you're here this morning and the Lord will lead you to come and make a move for him, whatever need that may be, we invite